other things happening. Well, we did the North American trip, came back to get back into the flying again. And unfortunately, the chap who uh, was doing my instruction, his wife was ill and he was unable to take me out for uh, quite a while. So I ended up going out with um, another instructor who I didn't really get on with. He was quite sort of strict and picky and yeah, he was safe and everything else, but also it wasn't really quite fun. It was very much, you didn't check your car, Pete. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. You're going far too fast and everything else. And I got there and felt like a naughty schoolboy. I gave up with him and then I had uh, like the owner of the flying school. Went up with him, he was very similar to my instructor and in that um, he would allow you to fly to the point where you were about to kill yourself and him and then he'd take over. So you learn quite quickly. And we soon got into auto rotations and things again. Now my instructor has been back now uh, for the last couple of lessons, which is good, because we're now getting back into circuits again, and emergency procedures in circuits. And um, we've covered things like vortex rings, and um, hover at a ground effect, which is quite difficult to do without getting into a vortex ring. So I've done those and the last lesson was all circuits and doing auto rotations in circuits. So if you have an engine failure in the circuit, um, you can land safely, even with a bit of a bump. So that's all been going fine. I need to study this damn air law book and get that exam out of the way. And then I can do my solo circuit and we can start moving on to solo stuff. I'm up to about 26 hours now, something like that. So it's about another eight hours or so dual and then 10 hours solo uh, minimum. But it's probably gonna be close to probably about another 14 hours dual, something like that. Um, mainly because the gaps I have between lessons, it can be like two, three weeks at a time. So you lose a little bit of knowledge um, each time. If I was doing it every day, then it, it wouldn't be a problem but the longer you leave it you know it takes me 10 minutes to get back into it each time I'm, I pick up into the hover it's like wee let's take the hangar out so yeah it, it takes a little while to get back into it so the more you do it the the, the easier it gets uh, so that's going fine quite pleased with that uh, again when, when I'm doing the flying thing you certainly don't get any of the depression problems or anything like that because your mind is 100% on one thing so um, there's just no uh, flexibility for it to wander because if you don't concentrate, you're gonna die. It's probably the easiest contraption in the world to kill yourself in. The amount of things that can kill you in a helicopter if you don't know what you're doing is incredible. And it could all happen and go wrong very, very quickly. There's quite a disturbing video that Robinson uh, do. It's a safety video from the 90s. And in there, um, there's a section on low RPM failures. Uh, this is where the rotor slows down and you fall out of the sky. There's a video which has been shot by you know early 90s video camera. Somebody said, oh look, there's a helicopter going over the field and you see this R22 flying around. And then suddenly you see this R22 plummeting out the sky and then you hear fire engines and stuff. And this guy with the video camera then actually seeks out this R22 and you get nice zoomed in shots of the guy in the R22 who's been completely crushed where he's hit the ground at 400 miles an hour and a few feet away you can see the remains of his wife. Um, apparently uh, this was his first flight after getting his license and he made the major mistake of not keeping an eye on the car, Pete. The engine iced, stopped, and then he failed to enter auto rotation uh, quickly. So if the rotor drops below sort of about 85%, it just folds up and you die. Uh, so the rotor basically stalled to zero. When it hit the ground, the rotor wasn't turning at all. So he hit the ground with full impact. And it really brings it home to you how dangerous helicopters are. And I will never forget to check that carb heat gauge again 
That's a certain, so um, very important thing. And which is why we do all these safety procedures over and over and over again. So that's helicopters. So that's all been good fun. Um, I've just bought two new model helicopters as well because a few weeks ago I went to a model engineering exhibition in Thornbury where the local flying club had a stand there. So I chatted to them, talked to a guy about helicopter setup and said, he said, you know, we'll get one of these, they're really good. So I bought an Align uh, 250, which is needs a complete rebuild actually. It needs a shitload of parts on it, but I will get around to that eventually. And I bought um, Line T-Rex 450, which is a massive helicopter. That actually was in pretty good condition. Um, I needed to do a few adjustments on it and a bit of the setup was a bit weird with the gyro. But uh, that's now all ready to go. I've got the battery and everything, so it didn't have batteries, but I need to get a converter for the connector. But I've spooled it up and all looks good. And as it's a huge helicopter, it should actually be fairly stable. So I'm quite looking forward to flying that one um, at some point. And I'm quite looking forward to rebuilding the other one as well, actually, uh, which should be good fun. It needs a new chassis on it because if you ever put it together, rather than using Loctite, they decided to use super glue and it's completely knackered it. So I need to basically pull out all the good parts from it and just treat it as a bag of spares really it's got the speed control and the surveys which are like the expensive bits so i need to get a new chassis and stuff so i will rebuild that probably coming towards the winter months and i will then join the flying club uh, model flying club next year now so it's the summer months at the moment so it's all been about geocaching um i haven't done that for a few weeks but i'm up to 200 and 93. So I will do 300 this year purely to get the number out of the way and then um, we'll try and do, yeah, it'd be a tough call to do 500 next year but we'll try and do uh, 400 at the minimum I think. That would be a good target. So I now have the t-shirt with like 100 and 250 fines on it. So we'll uh, try and get... Um, come back to join me, Sasha. Come on in. Come on in, come on, but you've got to be quiet. Good girl. Come on in. Sorry, you get random. When I edit this together, I get randomly get dogs appearing in that shop where I've had to keep on getting up, changing batteries and memory cards and things. And then various dogs kept on moving so apologies for that and I think I've shifted on the couch a bit as well just to make things even more confusing and I have a large curtain coming out the top of my head um so yeah that's been going fine good fun I did actually a complete series around Thornbury called the USA mega series which is like one per state plus a bonus one as well and I managed to do all of them in two Sundays so uh, that, that was good fun, and that was a lot of caches, plus some extra ones which were around as well. There's still quite a lot around Thornbury. Um, park up at Thornbury Leisure Centre, and then go around and um, do some around there. Uh, the, the, there's a lot there to still get. So uh, that'll probably be where I get my last nine or so. Exercise and health-wise, that's been pretty good, actually. Um, I've really got back into running again. which I do actually really regularly, it's not half marathon, it's um, just under nine miles. So I've done the half marathon route as well, which is like 13.26 or something. Uh, but the nine mile one, I can do now in about an hour and seven, something like that. So that, that's, that's a pretty good pace. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, plus, when I first started doing it, you like had to stop for a breather and things like that. But now it's just continuous bang, get it done, sorted, come back. And the first few times I did it, I couldn't like move and was hobbling up the stairs and stuff like that. Now, yeah, there's a little bit of soreness, but you you wouldn't really know you've done anything too strenuous. So I do that on a Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, and actually today is Saturday. I plan on doing that this evening as well if the weather stays okay. 
um, and get an extra one in there because we are on holiday in two weeks so we need our beach bodies even though it's not particularly good. It's better than what it was when I came back from America um, but uh, I'm hardly a, a slim uh, bod anymore. A bit of a tummy, too much wine. Um, so yeah, that's going really well. And then I still do combat on Mondays and I still do pump twice a week. And for about the past six months or so, a bit longer, I've been doing a, a personal training uh, session with Laverne every Friday after pump. So we do that for about half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, all free weights. So that's all uh, resistance training and building my arms and chest up and things like that. The, the legs tend to um, look after themselves fairly well through all the running. So, and in pump as well, there's um, squats and lunges and things. So that keeps all that in trim. So I did look in the mirror the other day and actually thought, yeah, for 42, that's not bad. Okay, there are more buff. 42 year olds but um, I'm, 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 I'm okay with my body at the moment I must admit uh, like to lose a little bit more off the tummy but that will probably come with with, with time I'm certainly not going to Turkey in two weeks where I do nothing but eat and drink 24-7 but yeah the, no, that that's all going okay so I'm quite pleased with that so th that's it basically that's where I am at the moment work wise I'm not going to talk too much about that. We, we are coming to the end of the project now, so there is a bit of a crunch on, but basically I'm not really going to do any extra hours on it because it would just kill me and it's not worth it. Uh, I do do a lot more hours than I should do on it, but I'm certainly not going to do any more. I've got no plans to work weekends. I don't mind doing late evenings and stuff when I come back from the gym and then do some more work and things. That's fine because I'd, I'd only be sat there watching the telly or doing something shite anyway. So um, I don't really mind doing that. But when it starts digging into your weekend and stuff, then no, I don't think that's on. I'm not really into that at all. Yeah, th that's due to be finished November and then be out for Christmas and stuff. And I don't know what I'll be doing after that. Probably more of the same, I expect. But it'd be nice to get that one out. It's had demos at various shows and things um, and it's gone down pretty well uh, so that's quite pleasing for, for, for once so yeah that, that, that's going fine so that's where I am at the end of August beginning of September uh, and we will see how we go for the next few months I will probably do another one of these boring talk to the camera jobs uh, around Christmas time I imagine unless anything exciting or weird happens in the meantime. Um, plan on doing a few more videos with Jamie. They're a good laugh to do. The face painting one was actually great fun and the plasticine challenge one was uh, good fun as well. If you haven't seen those, um, have a look through the playlist on my channel. They're under collabs. If you want to see more of my helicopter flying, then there's a section on there which is all the helicopter videos, including the last one, which is now not to music. It's actually got all the intercom on it as well. So I've got all that rigged up now. Uh, so that's all pretty good. And yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>